We're live. We're live, hello ladies. We're well, just on Trinity London. Katie and I are at the studio with Shasha, who's running the shoot. Claire's doing social media, Lily's doing social media, and we've got our lovely ladies here, and we're doing a shoot with two new cheek shades, Lady J and BB. And um, if you want a pre of what BB looks like and the makeup look for BB, go on to Trinity London. They're going to be available for next Tuesday. But I was thinking a lot, even though I'm on my dry January. How are you doing on your dry January, ladies, by the way? Are you managing to um, not shop? We've got quite a few good videos. Lulu and I have done some videos recently on accessories. We've done a great belt. When's that going to come out, darling, tomorrow? Um, scarves are coming out tomorrow. Scarves belts tomorrow. will probably yeah, be next week. We're doing on Instagram. And we did this half hour film, which Lulu's editing. Everything you ever need to know about scarves, tonality, how they bring an outfit to life, how I do my scarf tying, all of that is going to be on that film tomorrow. And right now I'm thinking about looking at the trends for spring summer and whenever I spend January culling in my own wardrobe I want to spend it shopping in my own wardrobe for the next season so it was only last two days that I thought what are the colors for spring summer I wonder how many of you follow fashion enough to know what are the strong colors for spring summer do you know Katie no. do you know Lulu <laughs> Like lilac, baby yeah. bloom, yeah. coral, yeah. yellow. Yeah. Yellow is a big one. Lulu is our fashion forward girl <laughs> in the office. And what was interesting is when I did a search, because before I start doing this morning in February, I start looking at what's in for the season so I kind of get ahead of the game. But when I looked and I said, what colours are in for spring, summer 2019, it literally showed me the whole bloody rainbow. So at the end of the day, You'll see in stores, they'll be led by a trend. And when trend forecast reports come out two years ago for what's going to happen in spring 2019, there'll be fabrics that the main wholesalers will make and smaller brands will buy into those fabrics and they're buying into a similar color palette. Whereas companies like Zara set their own trend. They decide what are the colors they're going to bring into play that season. So when you looked around Zara last season, I'm sure you saw a ton of khaki, a lot of check, a lot of tartans, um, a few bright shades, but not much actually. But this spring summer, I think we will be seeing these neutral shades. So it's quite fortuitous that we're doing kind of how to do a neutral palette. And weirdly what I'm learning is when I wear a neutral color, like a nude for my skin tone nude, this applies for any kind of nude, whatever your skin tone. Nude to me is a generic term for near the color of your own flesh. It's really interesting to think about doing a makeup the shade of what you're wearing, and that's what today is about. So we're trying that today, Katie, on the yeah. um, But any questions? Um, people say that they love the look of um, VB, and they can't wait for the lips cheeks, and they're very excited for this look. We'll try and do pre-ordering from Friday. But it's been a long time coming because our neutrals at the moment we create from the three in lip um, Lux, which are Eugenie and Tashi and um, Suze. And these are slot in and are slightly different shades. So if you think Tashi is our most apricot nude, VB sits a little bit under that. And if you think that, weirdly, if Eugenie had a baby with Electra, it might make a bit of the, uh, Lady J. Um, and Lady J, which we're focusing on today, is named after my friend Jane Henderson, who is an incredibly supportive um, friend and fabulous. And she, um, we thought Jane was a bit of a, <laughs> Jane is a bit of a name. I'm Sarah Jane, so I find anything with Jane in it, like, so we said, can we call you Lady J? Sounds more dynamic, so she said yes. So it's named after her. Amazing. But how many of you have thought about your, you know, how many of you match your colour palette to your um, products? I think that when I do very bright shades, like if I were to do a Swainy or a Pookie or a Demon, which are bright um, lip shades, I have to be very careful 
about matching my lip to a bright red dress, for example. Whereas somebody who might have grey hair and a paler skin and a darker eye sometimes can look amazing to do the same lip as their dress. But just for my combination of um, skin, hair and eye, generally I don't match. But in this neutral look, we're going to be doing a little bit of it. But do you do the same colour as a dress? Would you do the same lip shade as a dress? I do like to pick out a little bit, passion. Yeah, little bits of colour. Even mm -hmm. if it's not exactly the same shade, it's inspired by yes, the tone. Yes, exactly. So I like to incorporate rather than like do something completely different. Yeah. And Shasha, whenever she does my makeup, and lots of you've seen her do my makeup, she'll always pick a little colour out that would then have a reflection. So I wore an Alice Templey dress before Christmas, which was black, nude, with these tiny little red dots, but they were the colour of Swaney, and then I did my lip in that and it worked really well. So they're just things to be aware of, and if you're doing culling with me, um, this spring, just you know, I'm looking at things that I never wear, colours I never wear, and just getting rid of them. I'm, I'm doing a very aggressive culling, I've done a rail already, I've just ordered a new rail for more plan. So I kind of take things outside my cupboards, we know I have a few cupboards, put them on the rail, and then I'm dividing the rail up into what I'm going to sell. So I'm going to sell some stuff at Encore and Sarancester. I'm going to sew a few things on Vestia Collective, my designer pieces, and then all my kind of Zara stuff and a bit random things and things that um, won't sell, I'm going to separate with the team and friends and family and then remember the line rail. So that's, that's how I'm heading. But how many of you, how many of you are culling right now or just cleaning out your wardrobe? Um, people are dying to know when Miracle Blur is coming back in stock. 28th of January. Let me just put some on for you now to make you feel. So Miracle Blur. Do go on the wait list, ladies, because it's got now 3,100 on it, I think, or 3,200. Um, and let me order 5,000. But if I put it on like that, you can just see it, it will just fill in any lines. And if you've got a little bit of shininess and it's from an open pore situation, you can put it on like that. And it will just immediately soften it. If you have a bit of a pebble chin, where your skin is separated a bit from acne scarring. You can put that on like that. Um, and then also, if you've got frown lines and things, you know I have sort of frown lines here, I can just soften that. I think for very, very, very deep lines, it will fill it in a bit and soften it. But those fine lines, it really gets into, imagine it's like blue filler. People are loving the um, the ponytail, actually. Are they? They're loving their hairstyle. Well, the hairstyle is just what I've bunged up. <laughs> but you know when you have days where you're fed up with your hair? And I... I I'm not love my hair, but we can all get fed up with our hair. So I um, thought, for this Lady J, we're, we're trying to differentiate in the two different colours and how we um, portray them. So when we do social media and when we do films for it, we, we sort of have a brainstorm with a theme because... Vivi, which I had on on Trini London, is this kind of lovely, like a coral sunset shade. It's warm, it's beautiful, it's very much for people who have warmth in their skin, hair and eye tone. And Lady J is a slightly cooler, apricotier colour and just a little softer, like that. We Would go. we be able to swatch them? Yes, we can so swatch them for you. So if I put on, there's Vivi. And here is Lady J. Lady J is slightly like Catherine and Electra had a baby. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like that. And then on a paler skin, let me do. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's not a bruise. That's uh, we were she, we were doing something earlier. So that's um, VB like that. And then Lady J is softer. There. Uh, there you go. But really good nudes and, and some ladies have been saying to us they want a more neutral nude. So I usually wear this and we'll show how we do it, but I usually wear it with a tiny bit of lip treat from Anna over the top because my lips are very dry at the moment. But it's um, also, I think would be beautiful with a bit of Maddie over the top, Lady J, yeah. just to soften, soften and give that ethereal uh, look to a makeup look. So we're going to do quite a strong eye today yeah. because we're going to have a very uh, neutral um, lip. People are loving the blouse. Do you know where it's from? This is, hang on, Charlotte went out yesterday with Emily and got some things from Zara sales. I didn't buy it 
I wish I did. Fifteen ninety nine. They got it yesterday in Zara. Basic. But it's so pretty. I never usually wear frills and softness like this, but it's incredible how when you put yourself in an unusual style, you can become soft. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like a marshmallow. And you know, I'm into experimenting. I want to try and do a very different look every single day this month and not go back to my classic crop navy trouser with uh, my silver Stella and a white shirt, which is my comfort blanket clothing. So I'm doing a whole neutral look today, which I'll show you later on on Insta. A lot of people are saying that they're very excited to cull and watch your culling videos. Oh, well, we'll do more culling. I did, how many of you saw my, my summer wardrobe? I weirdly, on Sunday, did my summer wardrobe and I think because I'd been in India and I'd worn a few things and I just remembered from my summer holiday what I hadn't worn and what I'd packed. And I think if you do that two years in a row, you pack certain things and you don't wear them, those things have literally got to go. And so I got rid of about 20 bits of my summer wardrobe, um, which I kind of feel much better about. So I'm doing each thing. We did belts together, we did scarves, Lulu and I. So the next thing we might do is some um, jackets and shirts. But I want to just open up my wardrobe and everything in it thinks that I'm wearing this. Because there is the old adage that we wear 20% of our wardrobe 80% of the time. And that's crazy because it means that there's a lot of things there we might have spent money on. And this generally happens. The thing you spend the most money on, you wear the least. That special dress for a friend's wedding, the cocktail party dress. So I want to start to take some of those special items and wear them in the day and enjoy them and not just have them there on the side in a bit of nice, sketchy, old dry cleaning bag hidden away. So it's about how I can dress down those special pieces um, to wear them on. So I'm shouting now because it's so loud and everyone's getting very excited, but I like that. Good energy. What's going on the eyes? So we are doing a little bit like that. Great, yes. It looks great, the strength actually, and works very well. Strength is a very lovely, washed out, plummy shade. Um, Lovers is a little bit cooler. Strength, I'd say, has more warmth. Yeah. Yeah, to it. Strength more aubergine and lovers more go towards Yeah, because because um, Lady J is a softer colour. Yeah. It a stronger to kind of balance. The nudity. Yeah. Yeah. And doing a, doing a wash of this and building up the strength. Katie and I were talking earlier about. When you use a dark shade, just start gently and, and keep blending it and you won't make a mistake and that's the difference between a powder and a cream. I think when I used to put a powder on, I put it on and I think, shit, I put on too much and I can't move it. Yeah. I can't work with it. When you do cream and you build it up with your finger or with a brush, you can control how your smoky eye is developing. Yeah, start off lower and then you can gradually build up the primer as well as the socket. Well, in the shower, like scrubbing on it, so you do diffuse it. Yeah, tell me if somebody, this is a question we'll ask a lot, Katie, so I'd love your answer. But if you have, I have an eye which slightly has an overhang. And so it turns down a little bit. It turns down a little bit. So how do you then lift the eye up? Just how you're doing your makeup now to show. Um, just so you can see. I'm going to use a little brush just so you can see around the So I would, if you push the brush me, if your eye naturally hangs downwards or turns down at the outside, I would li create the illusion of lifting up. So you can see I'm going in this kind of like upwards diagonal motion. So I'm not putting any makeup or any eyeshadow from here outwards so I'm kind of cutting the corner if that makes sense kind of like the illusion of a kind of a cat eye shape but not too extreme so we're keeping it nice and soft and then you can either use your finger or a brush and just go in and kind of, kind of just tapping it like you would with your finger just to soften the, sh soften the edge so it's not too harsh so then when you've got your eyes open it's kind of lifting upwards and not dragging down Amazing. What BFF cream do you wear, Trini? I wear light medium. And then in the summer, I probably wear medium. 
and I very occasionally wear light when I want a really pale look. Mm. Um, so I'm always wearing it when I'm wearing a strong lip, which needs a very clean head back face, I might just do light. So I vary, but my true colour for my skin tone, which is rosy olive, is light medium, and I wear Trintron just a touch. Amazing. Um, what would be better with chalice, strength or lovers? With chalice, I would say you should keep it cool, and I'd be inclined to say lovers, but I do say. I would say lovers. Because chalice is that kind of lavender yeah. cool shade, and be beautiful together. Chalice is one of our new Rocketman shades. Amazing. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Um, does Botox help in lifting eye overhang? I think it can do both. It can make it worse or better, and it depends entirely on the practitioner. Some people I've seen who've had Botox, their eyes suddenly droop, and they talk about it. So you really want to go to a person who does Botox, where they're very careful how they put it in, that it doesn't push down your brow. And a lot of people who do Botox very well do quite a lot of stuff here, so that you're lifting from there, and you're not making a heaviness above your eye. Amazing. Um, if you've got dry, sensitive skin but oily in parts, would Garden of Wisdom for acne be too harsh? Would Garden Just of Wisdom be too harsh? Which Garden of Wisdom? Just general Garden, Garden of Wisdom, Wisdom range. Is, has got incredibly wonderful products which are sensitive, good for sensitive skins. It's got lots of different acids, it's got mandelic, lactic, it's got the vitamin C serum, it's got an anti-aging peptide with hyaluronic in it, it's got a hyaluronic product. And I think if you've got dry and oily skin, you can use all the above. The vitamin C is about 25% vitamin C. Then you've got Barulic, which is a stabilizer for an antioxidant like vitamin C. Um, I think the mandelic acid is a soft acid you can use as well for um, just evening out the oily patches without drying out the other patches. Great. Sonia asks that, that could we please do a makeup tutorial for rosacea skin? We so can actually, Sonia. I think it's a very good point that. Um, and there are a lot of women who come into Trinity London who have that. Well, we've got some before and afters, Lulu. Because I think we've had a few ladies come into Trinity London some town months. And they've, they've really had a red skin before but we'll put that on our list maybe for yeah. a photo shoot next time and mm -hmm. perhaps we were thinking with the Trini tribe that it might be quite good that we do pictures with them with no makeup on as well as their essentials I was thinking about that I don't know how many of you would like to see when you go on the site and look at the Trini tribe for inspiration if you'd like to see some of those women without makeup on before we see their essential looks and their smoking look. but it's something we can think about Great, Sibi Hashan says that she's worried about doing a brown smoky eye because of dark circles. Can you give any advice? I think when you've got very dark circles, you just need to have a really good cover up underneath. And I was weirdly using Liv as an apricotier darker shade, foundation shade, and then Trintron over when I had some very dark circles in November. But I think you need to be careful, perhaps not to do too much on the lower lid. But the best, Charlotte's best anecdote for very dark circles is a ton of mascara on your top lashes. Yeah, it's like it's the quickest way to balance out dark circles, and it's about getting good coverage. But it shouldn't prevent you doing a lovely smoky eye. I think it's not about doing a hard pencil and I think hard pencils can sometimes echo a dark circle because they're just so harsh. What size of micro needle roller are you using? I use a 0 0.3 or a 0 0.5. I'm using at the moment the Lynette de Gaspé 0 0.5. But I also use this um, Glow Pro 0 0.3. Both are good. It's also about the density of the needles on the barrel. So lots of um, micro needles go from 300 to 700 needles. I kind of prefer about 415. The Nets is 415. Swiss Clinic is about 600. Glowpro I think is about 600 as well. The ones I don't like are ones where there's very, very few needles on the barrel and there's a separation of space, like the environment one I don't actually like because I don't think it does anything. 
and I like that you can do a feathering motion with a micro needling and you don't pierce the skin too much but you make a little impact so that your product can then be delivered further down into the dermis. Um, so those are my favorite. We did do a Secret 7 Tools, which we um, put on the blog on Sunday or Monday, I think it's on. And that's got my favorite Mike Rooney products. So what did you just put on the eyes? I just put a little bit of fortune on top, just put a little bit of glow. Oh, nice that. And the fortune sort of echoes a bit in the top. I love that combination. Yeah, yeah really top inspired Top inspired thing. So we've got fortune and strength on the eyes. Um, someone's asking, how do I address dark shadow on my top lip? It looks like she has a moustache, but she doesn't. Um, if it's pigmentation and not hair, then I would suggest really going for a good vitamin C program to just break down the uneven skin tone. And I think if you are considering <laughs> microneedling, I don't know the same lady, you could microneedle a bit and then vitamin C if you're on a budget. I like garden with some vitamin C a lot. If you um, are on a mid-budget, I'm trying to medicate oil vitamin C, which is very good. They have a new serum C. And as an expensive one, vitamin C night booster is very good. Skin Suticles also have something called Dark Pigment Relief Cream. And another one I like is Vino Perfect from Cordelia. Those are all really good products that break down uneven skin tones. And they work as well on dark patches as they might work on pigmentation. Margaret is asking about the ring. The and ring. do you have it on the website and we she really wants it? Well, we didn't even have it on the website. We just said we were doing it on social and then we put it on uh, and everyone bought one. So we will do more later. The more people request, the more we'll make them up. But we make them up in batches. We make no money on them. The ring base costs us £100. It's solid silver. And we literally put on the product on top and sold it for £130. Um, so the more of you who request, you can go to customer service and ask. We will make some more. And this is um, Lady J on the lips. Someone's looking at buying the face gym. Do you still recommend it? I do. It is expensive. It's four hundred pounds. Face gym pro. I used it a lot. Um, I haven't used it the last few weeks, but for Christmas I used it twice a week. And I do rate it just for lifting and tightening. Anyone who maybe has Casey or uses New Face, they're all similar products. But I just think that doing that motion and having that current works on a current has helped the tightness of my skin. Yeah. But it is a big investment. Have you tried the Nip and Fab Glycolic range? <laughs> I have tried the Nip and Fab Glycolic toner pads and I think they're fine, they're quite strong. Um, I can't remember what acid is in those exfoliating pads. Um, but they, they are I think probably better for an oily skin. Yeah, not for a dry skin. I've been using them. Yeah. yeah. And they have. The, the toner and the exfoliating. Yeah. The pads, exfoliating. No, not the pads, it's like a physical exfoliating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's got the hand in it, so it's designed to come up yeah. I think anyone with um, oily skin or just wants to keep some little puppies on the bay or friends on the face under on in control. How does Miracle Blur differ from face finish? Face finish is um, slightly powder based and you put it on and it absorbs um, added extra shine, leaving your face still with a tiny glow but not shiny shiny. Miracle Blur we developed to help to diffuse lines around the mouth, around crow's feet and to help fill in little scars. And so it acts more as a polyfiller. It's a very sponge-like texture and when you put your finger in you feel the sponginess and you can just feel it work in to your skin and fill in those lines. Whereas face finish is a harder texture and it really will just work 
incredibly well with a brush as well to uh, just take off added shine. So let's get a little brush and I'll just show you here. I sometimes use a brush and sometimes I don't, but just here where I'm a bit shiny. I will just put that on and it would just take away the extra shine. It's not mattifying my face and giving me a tired look so I find powder can give me a tired look. Um, if you need to use SPF 50, should you put it on before or after BFF? After BFF, yeah. I see BFF, um, if I'm in the hot sun, I will use an SPF 50. Sorry, and I will use the SPF 50 and then use the BFF. Not the other way around. Because it does have colour in it. So I like to put my SPF 50 over a vitamin C product. Anyone who needs to stay out of the sun, using a vitamin C powder beforehand can really help the prevention of pigment, uh, of pigmentation. So I put BFF on top to give me some colour. And you know, I on normal summer days in London, I'll just use that. But I do use about three pumps. You need three to four pumps to get the full benefit of the SPF. If you use two pumps, you're getting a very light SPF. What colour lipstick for people that who have just joined? This is Lady J. It's one of our new lip to cheek we're giving you a little preview of. And it's a matte neutral. And this is a sort of beautiful peachy, not too apricotty, not too corally. Amazing. Does Miracle Blur have a powdery or Vaseline type texture? Really neither. Um, it's very difficult to describe this texture. It's like a putty. Yeah, putty. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a putty. Yeah, it's like putty. Amazing. I'm going to keep that one. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Shahenda says, I need a good moisturizer. My skin used to be oily, but after giving birth, it's dry all the time and very acne prone. That's tough, darling, because you've got that combination of. I'd say if you're acne prone, there's very good ceramide creams that I think are good if you have acne prone skin. There's two products I'd recommend. One is Dr. Jart's Water Drops. It's a water based moisturizer. It'll give you hydration, but it won't aggravate your um, acne prone skin. But even acne prone skin does need moisture and can get dry. And then I would also look at, difficult to get, but a very good range, is Dr. Natasha Cook. She's an Australian dermatologist, and she has a niacinamide range, serum, moisturizer, everything. And I think niacinamide cream is brilliant if you've got acne, but you've got a dry skin. Great. Can you reapply BFF yeah. over your makeup to perk up at the end of the day? I probably do it every single day at lunchtime. And I'll just let you rub it all in and it will perk me up and then put some lip glow on top. Maybe a little bit of blush. Amazing. Hmm. Do you want to? Yeah. We're nearly there. So just for anyone who's joined, what we've done, we can say what we've done, Katie. So we have done. Um, Lady Jane we do. So on the eye, <laughs> on the eye we've done um, strength. Yeah. Okay. So on the eye we've done strength. Um, as I spoke with a little bit, a little flash of fortune on top, just for a bit of glow. And on the lip and the cheek we've got a new product, Lady Jane lip to cheek. Coming out next Tuesday. Yeah. Here's home. Charlotte shouting Lady Jane in the background. All right, ladies, I'm going to go now. Thanks for coming And um, I don't know if you've answered any culling questions, but I just want to know, are you still up for more culling? Should I do some more stuff this weekend and share it with you on Sunday? I was thinking of doing a bit of a culling in my wardrobe on Sunday and we could all mutually cull together. People were really, really responsive okay, about the culling, keep, so definitely. Whilst January's there, let's try and you know avoid the sales unless we feel there's stuff we really need to add to our wardrobe. The more you cull, the more you can see what you can make room for and what you can sell to give yourself some cash to go make your purchases. Um, and just to have a clearer head when you go into spring of things you love sitting in your wardrobe, not things that you don't wear very often. Have a nice day, ladies. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Most of